This is about your everyday life. Can you operate the advanced functions of your TV set at home with ease? <laughs> Can you understand the tech talk from your mobile telecom provider? Well, women are going to free us from these hassles, and I will try to explain why and how. The world is turning female. Womanomics, the emerging buying power of women, is a huge opportunity, also for tech industries. Better education, better jobs, higher income, make women a rapidly emerging buying power and a driver for innovation. So women buy tech products, but these tech products are made by men. Why is this a challenge? It's a challenge because women feel they get a bad user experience. They don't feel the tech products are designed for them. So gender is definitely a challenge and a potential for tech industries, and it's the background for our three years research project called Female Interaction, co-financed by the Danish government, and the result of our research are operational gender guidelines that help company to embrace the female approach to technology with better offerings. I'll try to give you a little insight in what we found out about gender and technology. Men like technology for its own sake. For tech companies, tech performance is home ground. They excel in engineering, making smarter, better products with more features. That's the male way of thinking technology. But performance, tech performance is not motivating in women. What motivates women is the social benefits of technology, things technology can do for her in her everyday life, making it better and easier. And technology needs to be swift to use for her and make her look and feel right in social situations because that's what counts for her. It's not about technology that needs to be kept in the background for her, it's about relations to human. So for the tech industries, this is a change of agenda from a performance-driven male agenda to a female user-driven experience design agenda. At Design People, we love to make better products, we love to make better user experiences, and we use this know-how to improve a specific product. This is a headset that was, when you started, the top-of-the-line mobile headset from Jabra made by a famous designer, um, but not bought by women. So a challenge. Together with Jabra, our design and research team try to find out why do women don't buy these products. So we weighed intensive user studies, and what we found out is that women like the basic value proposition of this headset. Mobile communication, that's something for her. But what doesn't come right is the way the headset enters her life. She doesn't like to go around with a headset in her ear because this signals that she's halfway out of a social situation right now, so it offends her sense of politeness. So we designed something new based on these female preferences. We designed a headset that you have on your clothes with a clip. You only use it on demand. With a very physical, clear gesture, you pick up the phone. The cord signals clearly that you're occupied. So this is a new headset based on female values. It's a polite headset. And what we find out when we test with women around the world how they perceive this new uh, headset, they love the new offering. They love the idea that this is a 
new headset designed for them. And what's even better is that men also are attracted by the new design. So what we can say in total is we have now a company, Jabra, that is attracting women far more efficiently and our um, foreseeing for the future is that the womanizing power and the requirements of women will drive tech companies to deliver far better user experiences for the sake of all users and we hope that our research and our guidelines can contribute to make this happen. Thank you very much.